Between the covers, my name is Bradley Shaw, and I'm tonight talking to Annie Chandler Cummings, who is the author of Rose in the Garden, which is our February release title. Um, good evening, Annie. How are you? Good evening, Bradley. I'm very well, thank you. So tell all our viewers about the Rose in the Garden, which is a fantastic new book you've uh, created and recently published with us. Um, Rose is a widow, a war widow. Her husband went missing um, in action in, in the Afghanistan war as an Air Force pilot. And she had two young daughters. So since then, in the uh, ensuing 18 years or so, um, she hasn't been interested in finding love again. You know, her daughters um, were growing up and she moved back to live at her um, childhood home with her mother who had, was also a war widow. So the four women um, over three generations were living together and everything was dandy until her youngest daughter got married and then uh, much to everyone's uh, amazement her mother at 70 found love and uh, she caught the bridal bouquet. So yes. At her mother's wedding? At her mother's wedding, very good. yes. Very good. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, she had just turned 50 and as, as uh, a, a gift from uh, family members and extended family members, she went on a cruise, Wonderful. which is something my husband and I love to do. And we, you know, we feel like we're uh, being had our throats slit this year. But anyway, no. and uh, and uh, of course, there she meets not one, but two men. Oh. who, one being the captain, mm -hmm. and one that she feels she has a connection to, and in some way, even possibly to her late husband. Ah, okay. So, so she's, a, got, she's got quite a, a selection, a choice. Well, exactly. Even when she's not looking for it. As, as exactly. <laughs> Sometimes that's the best way. <laughs> you know, you don't just find one love, you find two. Okay. Lovely. Okay. Yes. So and she didn't to... even have to go on the online dating trial, so that was even better. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, if they're all trapped on the ship, I mean, what are you going to do? It's a package deal. So exactly. is that is that based on uh, your own personal experiences in this sort of story, or is it something that you you've inflected with that sort of personal experience, or something you've just imagined and elaborated on the fact that you know, if and what if happens, as we do as authors. It, it, no, it doesn't come from personal experience. A lot of the characters uh, in the book have traits of people I know. Yeah. Um, and even, you know, her daughters and her mother have, have some traits. Yeah. Um, but I, I enjoy romance. I've, I've always read it. And um, I, yes, I'm still in the honeymoon stage of, of a romance at 60 years of age. So. I suppose it's it's nice to be able to write it. Alas, I didn't get the uh, the captain of um, of a ocean cruiser, but you know he's oh. he's wonderful because he's been the one that's actually supported my writing. Good, good. And I was going to say that. So he's supportive, and you've got family supporting you, so they're all positive for it. Yes, definitely. <laughs> um, I was uh, I'm a teacher and and have been all most of my life. Um, and teach special needs kids. So I, I've actually brought that into the book. So there are things that I do know um, because I like to bring in sort of current events into the book, uh, um, into my books. Um, so, but uh, yes, he, he thought it was time that I semi-retired, so just did relief teaching. So it gave me time to do my writing. And he was, yeah, the first one who's ever said, you love to write, it's what you want to do, do oh, it. Well done. Yeah, so how often, how many hours do you find now writing? Like you find it's a, a growing, you know, growing commitment, growing process of your time? Well, it, it certainly is going to be because I have just retired, mm. being the end of the school year, um, at going on to 62, I think, 
I've, I've done my my deeds yes. um, and I, I really enjoy it. Um, so I, I've had to previously work around my teaching and things like that, yes. whereas now I can dedicate, um, you know, and, and do it. I find writing at night time a lot easier for me. Yes. Uh, the house is quiet and I can type away in my office mm -hmm. um, without distraction of television and dogs and husband, etc. Oh. So, but you can't do that if you're going to get up and go to work the next day. No, it is, it is hard. Mm. Yeah, so um, it sort of suits the time, you know, when I like to write and how I like to write. So sometimes I, I, I like to write every day and, and now, um, just finishing the, the editing, the proofreading. Um, I'm, I've gone back now to the to the next book, A Poppy in the Meadow, yes. and uh, rereading what I've written, which is about a third of it, to, to, to get on with that tale. Awesome. So I'm fired up, ready to do that now. Awesome. So obviously, Poppy in the in the what was it? Poppy in the field. A, a Poppy in the Meadow. Sorry, Poppy in the Meadow. So that's yes. the next book. Uh, that's correct. Out. That's exciting. So, so you're already evolving. I mean, this is part of a series I think we discussed. Yes. This book is the fourth. This is the fourth. There's yes. four in the flower quartet, I've called it, for want of a, a better name. <laughs> yes. Do you want to tell everybody why it's called the flower quartet, which I think is quite cute. I thought it was quite cute. Well, uh, the, the matriarch, um, Lily, uh, is uh, the, the grandmother. Um, well, and the mother, and uh, she had a daughter, Rose, about whom I've written, and then Rose had two daughters, Daisy and Poppy. <laughs> but there is a twist, and I'm hoping the readers, some have, um, who've read the others, um, pick up about the, the surname and the other part of the book. So um, um, if this is a rose in the garden, mm -hmm. I hope they pick up. Okay. Well, there's a challenge for everyone watching. There you go. You've got exactly. to pick up a little bit of a clue in there somewhere for a yes. So um, if you were going back to the start when you decided, were you young when you wanted to write or was it something you came into later in life or that there was a thing you've always just had? It, it is something I always loved to do. Um, and I suppose it's because I had a love of reading and we were encouraged to read at a very early age. Um, and I was one, probably about the only child in my year, uh, mind you, there was only seven year sevens, so who was um, very happy when we had silent reading. Um, I mean, we're talking way back in the early 60s here in primary school. Yes. Um, and I loved to write. And I remember the thrill of, of public publishing, which in those days, pre-computer, we mm. had to write a book for a, a younger, um, I think they were the year ones or twos or something, and we had to write a story for them. Yeah. And then we had to do our own, own illustrations. And I loved that. And after that, I used to always write. Good. Um, and even when I was teaching and things like that, and I was teaching English and drama, I loved to write. Um, unfortunately, a lot, all of my books over getting married and moving several times and having three children, mm -hmm. I don't know where the outlines part of the stories went. Um, even as I got older and I got my first computer and that was the good old floppy disks, um, yeah, lost those in, in shifts here and I moved overseas. So, you know, it's, it's only now that I've been able to store them and keep them um, and start the writing. Oh, good. So, so more recently then? So. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh. It, it's literally in the last four years. Oh, well, and you've done such a great job too, though. You've you've gone through uh, parts of the publishing process yourself, as you said, and you've explored all your, you've learned along the way. Um, you've mastered the story craft, I can see, because you're writing very, very effective. Um, so I know everyone watching should you know, get a copy of this book and really enjoy it. It's worked so well written. Um, Thank you. But, but yeah, so, so having that, that knowledge, would you, um, how would you, what would you, this is a two-part question um, to somebody 
aspiring to be a writer, to look at the craft, to look at the skill set involved, what would you tell them in your experience? What's the best advice you think would be good for a new Look, I would tell them, sorry to interrupt, to to give it a go, to actually get something down. Mm -hmm. And when I was really um, looking to do this, I did some online courses. I read a lot of um, articles on how to write character development and things like that from a, a, a range of people and took notes out as I think that's the teacher part in me. Literally, I took notes uh, and, and wrote up things um, to sort of try and hone my craft, I think. But then I realised a lot of it comes down to your own passion. And if you want to do it, just start writing. And I did an exercise where it was called 750 words, where every day, and I think it was for 30 days, you had to write about 700, minimum of 750 words and just type um, and, and don't go back and edit it. Just get you into writing something every day. Yep. And I found that to be very beneficial because it got you down in the mindset and got you writing. Okay. And from that, that is when I started to, to develop. But it was an idea that I had years ago when I wanted to write, um, which started out was going to be Three Sisters. Yeah. So it's going to be three books. And then I suppose as I got older, found love again, um, I looked and thought, well, you know, there's not a lot for when, you know, the older generations and not just the young ones get it, you know. Yes. And we know there is a, a there are a lot of second and third marriages going on. Put yes. my hand up for it's three. Been, it's um, timing, yeah, I agree. Yeah, so, you know, old uh, people my age are looking often for stories Mm -hmm. around that not just the 20 30 year olds they want to see something that is credible and and you know is they can relate to as well absolutely i think there's a more um a mature understanding of relationships too at at our age you know when where where you have had a few experiences you've you've had all the idolisms and the and the fancy fools and the and the explorations and now you have a concept in your in your mindset about your relationships they're more settled and mature and um there's more substance in them so i think that's what you you transpose in your story a lot is those characters have that authenticity of their age and their realism they're not acting out to this you know Idolistic they're not mutton dressed up as lamb. That's right. Yeah, they're not trying to be something they're not. They're being, uh, you know, women and you know senior men, and 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 they're having a relationship, a courtship, which is you know old style, which is lovely. Um, so that's great. Thank you for sharing that that story. So when, um, if I can ask the question of, I had one here. I just want to get your input on is because you just touched on it. The most difficult part. That's the most difficult part for you when you were crafting the 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 learning of what you said having been educated already um Mm. coming into fiction what was the most um challenging or or the most difficult part for you artistically in the process of creating a book creating a story and you know Um, i think it was overwriting for me Mm -hmm. um i started to try and describe everything <laughs> you know oh, over describe and 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 do more of the um the tell rather than the show and you know all of those kind of things and i was trying to use big words and you know when when just the normal everyday word could could suffice yes um and i think coming through your editing process going back now i've seen you know it doesn't have to be like that no. so i think it was just um getting down to understanding that how we speak is how we should write yeah whereas you know quite often and in in what i've done as a teacher in that it's the other way you're trying to make it better yep. rather than trying to make it simple yeah and that i think is to others that it is just a simple process if it is a conversation it is simple 
How yeah. do you speak? That's right. And I think that's the thing that a lot of new writers um, learning uh, as well is that 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 why say it with three words when one will do? When you can yes. when you can um, create and compact a sentence effectively, I think that's the art of writing is where you can really get a lot of content and message, a visual into a into a shorter impact for the reader to really engross themselves. Um, I know that artistically some writers love adverbs, they love to decorate, they love to flesh out and we get focused on word counts. I think people misinterpret that that word counts are quantity but doesn't necessarily mean it's quality all the time. You need to cut exactly. that back. And I think if you're if you're yeah being a, an older writer or or, a, or an experienced writer, you you understand the idea of self editing and, and make sure you can be honest with yourself and new writers of course fight that issue they, that's where we find um helping new writers um to learn that craft as they've, they've indulged it into editing they have to accept a lot of it as a challenge which is funny to talk them through that um so yeah so no i, I understand um the writing process as you say so so the when you write a prowls when you write a book you draft it do you do a lot of rewriting before the editor sees it or you are, are you a sort of like a once or twice over and then just pass it to someone and let them do the hard work or um a, a bit of both mm -hmm. i with a rose getting it back from steph i did three reads and each time i was still making um changes and in the end i thought enough is enough you know yes. it, there has to be a time where you go you know, this is my baby, but I've got to pass it over. It's like getting a kid to kinder. You've got to push them through the door and <laughs> just and take hope the that it works. <laughs> um, so, but other ones were more difficult because doing the self-publishing, it was a lot more difficult. Yeah. Um, and you would just get a, 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 an appraisal and then a, an edit and things like that. So I think it, you learn as you go along and um, I think the other thing with being an author is you've got to accept um, praise but you've got to accept mm. um, a critique you yeah. know that when it is given it is given with all good intentions yeah. and uh, I think whether we're, it's the creative spirit in in us we think oh you know you don't understand my character yes um it's the personal but it yeah. is good to have someone who's looking at it from uh a, 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 an objective point of view where we're well i don't know about others but i'm very emotionally connected and i'm almost worrying how i'm going to um close the chapter Mm. on this family when I finish the fourth book. I'm already thinking, oh, I'll introduce some other characters. We might just <laughs> yeah, have little time. novelettes. Yes, that's right. It can grow the webs, you know. Yes. It's like, you know, flowers in the attic turned out to be 10 books. I mean, you know, you could go forever. You know? But exactly. um, as long as you've got, look, the thing is, as long as you have the story and the passion in you, just keep writing. And so, as long as these people are going to want to and, read them and think so. And right. I know there are, you know, people waiting for this book, which is Absolutely. lovely. Absolutely. So those people watching right now, don't forget to buy Annie's book. That's a big hint. Okay. Please. Buy it. Um, so when, um, what, what's the, what was the most difficult part of this book to write? I mean, you've done a lot of cruises, so that obviously would have been more familiar for you, but what was yes. for you the most challenging part of this, this story to write? The most challenging part was, I think, deciding which of the two men Mm. Um, Don't give anything you know, away. Pardon? <laughs> no yes, spoilers. I won't give it away. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was, it was, it, you it's know, when you like down. two characters mm. and they've both got um, a lot going for them, mm -hmm. um, that that I think was one of the, the hardest part because you sell both of them mm. as, you know, really great men. Um, so, and you know, different parts of how different parts of the life could be changed yeah. at this at this state, you know, at her age, which was 50, yeah. which is still very young. Yeah. So yeah. so for you, do you did you write Rose from a perspective of your mindset or did you find Rose had her own values and ideals inside uh, of her? So you created the character in that authenticity uh, Rose or is, part of you? 
<laughs> Rose is a much nicer person than I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no need for self praise. Yeah, <laughs> Rose is a lovely character. In fact, in fact all all of the the four women, you know, they they've all got different characteristics, and I'd like to think there's a little bit of me in them, um, and also of you know my friends my sisters of the heart who encourage me and things like that so yeah. i've drawn bits and pieces out of each of us and, and woven them into a character uh rose is into to patchwork and craft so i know that because that's another one of my passions so i like <laughs> to put those kind of of, of things in yeah. very good so do you find it like like as being a woman, of course, writing as female characters is, is a given that elements of you will be involved in it. A lot of your women friends possibly were were traits as well. But what about your men characters? How do you find writing the opposite sex when you've got, you know, I mean, you've got an objective view of a man, you know yep. what they are and who they are, but you've had some relationships, but do you feel there's sort of difficulties in writing some of them as men, like how they, how they call you? I... I think I'm pretty good at reading people and reading men. Mm -hmm. um, and I have been married three times. So that's, you know, <laughs> this is my third. So um, <laughs> you okay. kind of pick the good. You, Annie. It wasn't you. <laughs> no, it, look, it, <laughs> as worry. I say, well, I say yeah. in the book, and I will do it, I'll take 50% <laughs> of the blame in anything. Really? So, I only 30. I just said, no, nah, I'm just going to take 30. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose you know I've I've had some um, some strong male influences in my life. I've also had some ones that you go, ooh, you know. Yeah. So it is, uh, and I'm a, a, a people person. Yeah. I can't live without people. So I don't know how you survived over in Melbourne. In Perth, <laughs> we were very lucky during COVID. I would have gone absolutely spare. You know, know. I, just, I was busy, I thankfully. I was busy. We, um, a lot of people decided to finish a book, so that kept me busy because everyone kept sending me stuff to read. So I had, I had heaps to do, and the team was busy because I kept flicking it on to them. So, and that makes 2021 very exciting because we've got a lot of work and a lot of things happening. Um, exactly. So, which is great. But um, and you are a people person, very sociable. But um, so you've survived COVID. <laughs> we all have. Yeah. So what? Um, what now for Annie? So the next book's coming out. And, 2021, how long does it take you to write a book? What do you feel is going to be your, your goal for the next phase for people? Um, well, I would like to republish the first two mm -hmm. yep. um, and have sent them on to you. Yes, yep. we've got those. Uh, for re republishing, so that's book one and two. And I aim to have um, a Poppy in the Meadow to you. Yes. Hopefully you'll accept it. Mm -hmm. um, early 2021. Okay, well, good. Well, you are writing. So that is my yeah. my thing for the, the summer holidays. And so, um, you know, so if they enjoy, and I'm hoping people will, and uh, friends who have written, uh, who have read it mm -hmm. to give me feedback, etc., have loved it. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to get them all out. So they are gonna have a fresh fresh access yep. to the series. Wonderful. Exactly, so the... 2021, you'll have all the series out. <laughs> no, no pressure, thanks Annie. No, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I just all write, right. you do the magic, I'm, I'm okay? Gonna some, I'm gonna go do some work. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. um, so tell me, the, with that in mind, having written such a, a big series in such a short time, you said a few years, four years, I think you said, um, do, you, do you find any writer's block came up for you or do you, or do you how do you combat that? How do you, and, and share how you, how you might fight writer's block if you have it? I, uh, look, I have, I've had to have gaps between um, the end of each book, mm -hmm. but then I'm also, writing a non-fiction series. I turned 60 last year. And um, so I decided to write another book called 60 and Sassy, Aging Disgracefully. <laughs> well, the title says it all there, people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. And, but, you know, looking into all of the things that start to go downhill very quickly yep. as you hit 60. Um, and so I've also now uh, 
set out ideas for 70 and sexy aging distastefully, mm -hmm. um, 80 and ordinary aging cantankerously, and 90 and naughty just aging. <laughs> so whether or not I get to them, I've, I've sort of got those. And, and then I've thought, well, my 50s were quite an interesting uh, decade. So I might do um, first 50 and frivolously um, <laughs> <laughs> acting flirtively okay. or something like that. Well, um, that's going to keep you very busy. It's, it's very good, very uh, interesting. And you're going to use yeah. a lot of yourself in those elements. Are they memoirs or are they going to be more? Well, the, the 60 more was recording. definitely, look, I've only started 60, but I was looking at what starts to go wrong very quickly as you get there. <laughs> um, the 50 will definitely be me. Um, I've started work on the 70 and I have started interviewing people. Obviously, I'm not in my 70s, yeah. but um, especially a lot of people who've read 60 and Sassy have yeah. given me some stories. So it'll be from other people's point of view wow. then and, wow. and what I'll be looking forward to. Okay. So just going back to my original question. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> As <laughs> I, 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 I say, I go off on tangents. That's I'm okay. very sorry. That's okay. So you're a very comprehensive and invested writer. I love it. But one of the things I was asking about was, do you suffer writer's block? Have oh, block. How would you How would you explain to people that you get over it, or what What do you find is a good remedy? I always ask this question because writers have different techniques, different ideas. Well, that was one of the. I started writing something that I knew about when I when I was having problems. Yep. Um, so I switched. Started another project. Yes, so I started writing 60 and Sassy because Perfect. I was able to get the flow back. Um, and then I left it for a while, went back and reread mm -hmm. my the chapters I had written, yep. looked at the notes because I'm a I'm a pansy, I'm not a plotter. <laughs> I, I've got the the outlines and I had all four books outlined before I started writing Daisy. Yep. So I had it there, but then I started to tweak it mm -hmm. and uh, uh, different ideas went up. So I, I just found by writing something that flowed from me because it was about me, yeah. I, it got me back into writing and, and gave me a rest. And I just took a rest and then went back to it because I was finding that what I was writing and a lot of it I scrapped was it was being forced out yeah rather than coming from the heart yeah. it was coming from here and it was very wooden yeah so I took I took a break and started writing something frivolous and um that's good at, because at least you kept writing like that's part of I yes. think writer's block is don't don't move away too far from writing like try to stay in if it's you know if it, if it is a block on a story a particular story yeah write something else i agree that's a yeah. technique i use as well um mm. some go for walks some like to go to a movie some like to just sit and you know take a couple of days reading the book but yeah if you can oh. keep in vain to, to keeping yourself you know uh free or clear enough that you can come mm. back to it definitely i tell you what does help me is being by the sea and i'm lucky we're only a kilometer a walk away um, and so quite often yeah. I, I do a lot of my writing on cruises. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, you know, especially the at sea days. Yeah. Um, but now I've got a great little cafe. It's 1.2 kilometers walking down. I can sit there, look at the sea and a lot better than in my office looking out at my back fence. That's for sure, yeah. for sure. No, it is, it is about space. Um, and about being comfortable and, and being is. in the right mindset, but also environment, because that, that adds to your to your creative uh, freshness. So yeah. Yes. So um, if I can, like like, so you've written four books, a, a, a saga series of, mm. of these uh, mothers, daughters, women. women. Um, mm. So how did you create? Tell us, tell the, the audience how you created the women, how you created the story. What was the incubus for you to say? Oh, I think. I want to share, I've got this idea, I want to create this. And, and tell us, how did that happen? And then and how did it evolve for you? Uh, literally, it was coming across my notes that I had written in a good old notebook, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yep, back to those. And I had written about, it was going to be three sisters. Yep. And they had the flower names as well. Um, and I was rereading those notes and the characters and things like that. And that 
it was sort of like an epiphany. I think going to sleep, thinking about things, which I often do, I tend to wake up in the middle of the night and with an idea, mm. I've got to, like most people do, write it down. I found the best thing to do, which I've now done, put a voice recorder on my phone, which is by my bed. Yep. And quite often wake the husband and the dog up because I'm talking away. <laughs> so so I sort of sneak out into my office, uh, office <laughs> opposite. <laughs> And, and I do that. So it, it, it came about and then I thought, well, why couldn't I do it in a different way? Mm. I like strong women, women who've overcome something in their life, yep. which is probably why I like books from Kathy Kelly, Liz Bursky and, and things like that. They're strong characters um, and they, you know, develop yep. their strength through yep. things that they've gone in. And I looked at that and I, um, I, the first one was my son was going into the uh, Australian Army Reserves and I went over to his graduation in Wagga Wagga and yeah, spent a week there one day. Um, anyway. <laughs> like that. Yeah, and that's when I sort of thought about bringing in the army and that kind of thing, and, and it just developed from mm -hmm. there. So I sort of kept some of the characters, parts of them, yeah. but changed it to being a family thing. Um, and I also read uh, an American author, and she writes a lot about families. Um, mm -hmm. They tend to be, you know, the, the the Sullivans, the Maine Sullivans, and the New Zealand, uh, New York Sullivans, and the something. Yeah. So they're all the cousins. They're not so much the older ones. But I thought, well, you know, this is a, a you know, you can really get into the family yeah. and um, and look at them, and then, uh, you know, looked at them having uh, a relationship with one or other of the armed forces. Yeah. So and you know. So did, that. You pick, did you pick the period of the book uh, to start with? You said that this is the fourth rose in the garden. So there's others that you've got. The first one, say, that you wrote was called Daisy. Is that the one? A, a Daisy in the Field, a yes. Daisy and that's the field. actual, the youngest. Yes. So that was taken as um, Rose was still the mother. and Yes. Yeah. So, so that period, you chose that period. Why was that period important for you? Instead of going back to Rose's childhood or, or bringing her up through the stories to have children and go, you picked her at that point where she was, you know, 20, was that you? 23. Was that your, yeah, was, yeah. That, was that your preference to that experience of time you uh, had in mind? It, I can't tell you why. It's I don't know how my mind works. Yeah, I think people curious. have been trying to discover this for a long time, <laughs> Bradley, yeah. and uh, they've given up. Um, it, it was just the, it, the story came to me yep. and it was just, it just you know, I, I wrote the o opening things and it went from there. And I'd literally written the, the first couple of pages and then I went back and plotted the story and brought in the other characters. So, yeah, it's, okay. it, um, I don't know where they come from. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I actually see stories, and I don't know if other authors do, um, I actually see stories almost like videos mm -hmm. in my mind. Yeah, I've heard some people do have that the visualization yeah. of it. Yeah, yes. Definitely, definitely. So yeah. I see the story as a video, and then I write it down. You just write what you're seeing. It's, it's yes. Much easier. Yeah. yeah. And that's mm. that's actually a very that's called I think it's like a zone or a state of writing where you can get that clarity and just just you know, churn yes. out what it is. And and if it's strong, it'll stay with you. So you don't have to write it all in that day. You can live live on it for for a week or two and just let it sort of evolve a story piece of everything. Yeah, I agree. I've heard it. I've never experienced it myself. I'm more of a you know particular writer on right. yeah. the construct of the words and more than the visuals. Um, and so I tell you a... what I use a lot. Oh yes. Post-it Post notes. It's yes. just there's just over <laughs> bits of paper and outlines there's post-it notes everywhere. Oh that's that's inspiring because there's a lot more work coming, this is good. So <laughs> um, so tell me what would be your uh, writing kryptonite? Like if you had something that would, you know, just you had a plan to write and all of a sudden something would happen and you'd be like off on the tangent just what would stop you from writing death oh okay well <laughs> that's pretty much everyone's <laughs> um i i'm hoping now that 
you know, I've come into it late. I'm, I'm actually hoping that this is, is the start and nothing's going to, to stop me. Um, you know, I look at people like Barbara Cartland who, you know, in her 90s, okay, I won't be pink and, and you know, with lots of feathers thank goodness, <laughs> and a pink house, but I, I just hope that now that the, the storyteller in me will be able to, to come out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah well. and I have <laughs> the, you know, I, I now have the time. Um, I don't have the commitments of, you know, young kids. I've got the grandkids, love them to death. Um, and then you back, know, so, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I do want to write a story for each of them. Yes. Um, Children's books in the way, are they? Pardon? The, the children's books are on the way, are they? You're going to have to yes. take catalog? Yes. My goodness. That's good. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> so based on them, but, you know, to, to go to go yeah. out. Um, so I, I, I do. I've, I've got a lot of ideas. Good. Um, so good. I'm, it literally would have to be either that or dementia. <laughs> and Basically. that I can't remember my stories. That's right. Well, I, then you just find yourself writing the same chapter over and over. Yeah. <laughs> that'd, be very, that'd be very frustrating because we wouldn't get forward anywhere. So, um, what to, so on that premise, um, from that aspect, what, what for you, and this is not this is not a, a general sense, it's actually for you, what do you see as a, as a sense of literary success, like in, in your definition? I'd love to save money, but it, it's not that. I would like to know that people and, and I have had some feedback from the, the, the self-published books, is that they love the characters, mm -hmm. they, love, they love reading them, they want to know about them, and as some have said, you know, when's the next book? We want to know what's happening with the, with the next in the family. Yeah. And I think that's it, it's, it's that because I love reading, yeah. and I get an enjoyment out of it, I would love that other people enjoy it. And it gives them somewhere to go to when all around us, like with this year, has yeah. been awful, that there's something they can get lost into and forget, and you know, it. whether it's a, a fight with the, the husband or the, the kids' grades need to improve or, or just the COVID thing that there's something positive that they can get lost into right. for half an hour, a chapter, or half the night. Yeah. You know. So being successful is being read. Yes. You say. So I think being yeah. find, find appreciation. Um, I think that's every writer's, writer's desire. Um, exactly. You know, and if I can make a living off it in my, you know, dotage, well, that's even better. It's a bonus, you know? definitely. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. that's right. And and you've got, uh, you're creating the catalogue and I think you'll create the fan base with that basis too. So very confident to seeing that happening in the future. Uh, everybody watching, remember, buy Andy's book. So, <laughs> books. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> So tell me, do you, so does it energize you or exhaust yes. you writing? Like you feel invigorated when you've written something you're happy with? And what about I, when you're I, frustrated? How do you, do you feel angst by something when you know you want to write something but you can't get it? Or how do you experience writing as it happens? It, it does, it invigorates me um, generally. Um, I go through the emotions like, uh, and there are some, you know, some sadder scenes in the book and I have written them during the night and I have gone to bed absolutely emotionally drained. Yep. Yeah. But to me, that's great yep. because I'm hoping that's what others will feel. Mm. Um, so I go through the gamut of emotions. I laugh with them. Yep. Sometimes I write something and I go, oh, my God, I'm yeah. even making myself laugh. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm classic. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I hope others, you know, like, like that as well. Um, my kids, like, love my books. Yeah. Um, the two sons more than the daughter have said that they read, speed, speed read through, you know, the, the more private of, of things that have happened in some of the books <laughs> because, you know, they don't want to know about mum. And I've even then talked about, you know, them going, like one of the characters going, oh, please, you know, 
parental sex. We don't want to hear about it. Go there, no. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it only happens when you're 30. That's right. Um, so, you know, yes, it, 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 um, when I get right involved in it, as I say, I can write through the night. Yeah. Um, and when I get frustrated, that's when now I realise you can keep pushing yourself, but you don't get anywhere. You no. know, it may be a day or two you need to just step back, do something, read a book yourself okay. um, and and let it come because yeah. I've, you know, and this is what I'll have to do now because it's probably a month since I've um, written anything yeah. with Poppy um, with all the editing. So now going back to it, I'll have to really read it again and feel the characters because I, I can't write unless I can feel them. Yeah. Me. Yeah, of course. It has to be authentic and that comes across yes. in writing. Yes. So I agree. So with that too, do you have a lot of writers, friends that help you that, that you can talk to about these things that you can vent off or create with or, or even share opinions with? Or how do I, you I'm, I've with just you? got in, into that. I didn't know many before, but having done a few courses and, and, um, uh you know we crit critique each other's work during the course i have some now i'm doing that and there's one lady who actually lives in perth and we meet up about once a month yeah or three weeks four weeks and we have lunch and we talk and um we we look at each other's writing and and yeah so i, I found that very beneficial um i did have a writer's group that I went to initially, yeah. but it was based at a university and I found a lot of them, I was the only one doing romance. Mm. Um, so I didn't stay there long because, you know, it... it you yeah, need a genre compatibility, you know. That's, I, that's I agree, right. I agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, they, they were sort of more, a lot of them were academics and, and yeah. writing into the history type of thing and it was the, yeah. ooh, mmm. <laughs> so I just thought, right, you know, my, not my style, yeah. you know. I, I wasn't going to share a, a, a sexy romance scene with them because I think they would have had heart attacks. But anyway, <laughs> you know, each his but, own. <laughs> So, okay, so now we're getting some friends and that's good. So the circle's growing. Yeah. I think you'll find too, you'll start, I mean, have you heard a lot from readers as well? Are readers of value to you? Do you find you're finding good feedback and, and support? Yes, yeah. yes. And I I, I was, because um, with the books that I had um, done um, independently mm -hmm. um, through through various things like Facebook pages, et cetera, had some people asking me to send them which i did yeah. so they were outside the friends of the friends um and i had a lady who was 90 years of age and i'm thinking do i send her my books anyway i um sent her and i got a card back from her saying that she loved them and said keep writing good well that's all so, you know. Jeez, that's wonderful well done so, yes awesome <laughs> So um, what's so next year's a big year. We've got a lot of books writing, drafting over the next probably by the sounds of a decade, which is yeah. awesome. <laughs> yes. So if I could, any, I'm going to wrap it up with you because what I want to tell everyone is that your books are out. So even though this is, as you've heard, the fourth part for everyone watching, that this is the fourth part of Rose in the Garden uh, of the series. The series was released by Annie on her own previously. So they are available. Um, tell us, Annie, where are they? On Amazon and still some of the online places? Yes, they're, they're online through um, Kindle. Yes. Okay. Um, they can be downloaded. Yes. And basically the only, well, yes, you can get print copies too, but yes. they apparently have to come from the US. Yes. Um, and yes, so that's the way you do it, bar the few, you know, ones I've got here. So yeah. so that's but, so that's what we call the emergency strategy at the moment. Once, that's you've right. read, once you've read A Rose of the Garden, if you need to have those books and read others, while you're waiting for us, for all I'm publishing, to publish them out for the next ones for Annie, 
Um, you can, so they are available. So don't panic, you're not gonna be left in the lurch. But what I am gonna promise you is that uh, the new updated versions will be coming out through Shoreline and you'll get a lot better opportunity to see them uh, in 2021 as well. Um, so Nanny, thank you so much for sharing all that information and, and, and entertaining us. That was wonderful to hear your writing um, nuances and styles and thoughts and, and passion. Um, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Bradley, and I look forward to a, a long relationship as editor and publisher. I mean, as writer, author and publisher. That's right. I feel like I'm going to be very busy. That's a good thing. <laughs> so I appreciate that. And uh, again, thank you everyone for watching and joining us. And please buy Annie's books. Please support independent authors uh, and Australian authors as well as they're up and coming. Exactly. So Annie has done a wonderful job. So we will talk again, Annie, on other books, I'm sure, next year. So Lovely. Thanks very much, Bradley. And thank you, everyone. Bye. Now, <laughs> <laughs>